What is up, Nuggets? It's your boy, Killer Pizza, here with a brand new video for all you rascals and rap scallions out there. Now today we're going to do something a little different. I know my channel is normally all about movies, but uh, last Saturday I actually lost a good friend of mine, Pure Fury Jeff Klaus, and I just haven't really been in the move, mood to record any uh, videos about movies. I've been watching them still, but I just haven't had the urge to turn the camera on. But I have been also listening to a lot of music, and I thought... This could be an opportunity for me to show you guys some of my vinyl record collections, some of my favorite vinyls I own. Because before I started collecting movies, once again, I collected a lot of vinyl records. And once I got into the movies heavy, I had to stop getting so many vinyls just because I can't afford to buy them all. But my boy, uh, Pierre Fury, Jeff Klaus, loved music. So this one's for him. Rest in peace, Jeff. I love you. Uh, let's get into it. First one I got is going to be Dr. Dre the Chronic. Now this is a classic in anybody's collection. Uh, one of the very first vinyls I ever got. I uh, got it from an ex-girlfriend of mine, so thanks a lot. Uh, you should have got me a Wu-Tang Clan album instead. Just kidding. I, uh, <laughs> I like this album a lot. A lot of good tracks on it. My favorite is probably actually Little Ghetto Boys, which isn't a very talked about album when it comes, or song when it comes to this album, but uh, yeah, overall classic. We all know about this. And the next we got Purple Rain by Prince. And I think it's actually the anniversary to his death coming up or recently passed. But uh, yeah, Purple Rain, it's a must have in anybody's collection. Uh, the, the back of this album is absolutely wild. I don't really have to say much more about Purple Rain. Uh, if you don't know about Prince, you better learn something. And then I got this one, I actually picked up at 2nd and Charles, this is Sublime, Robin the Hood, and this is a lot of their early recordings, live stuff, acoustic recordings, some of my favorite, uh, this is the back cover, which is cool, some of my favorite ones on here are uh, Greatest Hits, uh, STP, Boss DJ, yeah, all around great album. And then this is what's cool about vinyl records, because I had somebody recently tell me, like, well, you know, somewhat recently, like, why do you collect all these movies or whatnot? And it's like, you know, I have Spotify that has all these albums on there. I have uh, Netflix, Amazon Prime, but if I'm going to pay, I, I want the physical copy. And uh, just like movies are art in a way, vinyl records are especially art, because, like, front to back, but if you open this up... Look at that. So much cool stuff in here. Let's see. I think... Yeah, this is a really fun record. I love it a lot. I am a big fan of Sublime. And then we have Peace Through Vandalism by The Vandals, which is an essential for any punk rock fan. You guys are going to see very quickly here. I have a lot of hip hop. I have a lot of punk rock. And this is a funny story about this album. I actually got it at Hot Topic before they stopped selling vinyls, and they charged me $4. And I'm normally a pretty honest guy, but, you know, I guess I have some bad luck from time to time, so I just said, fuck it. I'm going to take it for $4, and uh, worth every penny. Actually, only five songs on this album, but they're all incredible. And another cool thing about getting vinyl records... That green on there, a lot of the vinyls they release, either limited edition or just the way they're pressed in the first place, have multicolor uh, sequences, combinations on them, and they look really sweet when they're spinning on the uh, record player. But yeah, this is an essential. Also, I'm upset I couldn't find my London Calling album by The Clash. That's my very favorite album of all time. I couldn't find it. I have boxes and boxes of vinyls downstairs. I have probably at least 200 that I got hand-me-downs, thrift stores, uh, flea markets, Amazon, uh, at the mall or whatever. But yeah, The Clash London Colin is also included. Also an album that influenced me a lot when I was younger, that is Dropkick Murphy's Do or Die. I know a lot of you guys know about Dropkick Murphy's, but this is where it's at here. If you don't know about their early work, that's when it was the best. I mean, still pretty consistent for how long they've been doing it. But uh, yeah, this is one of the albums that really got me into punk rock and... Uh, Go to the back, like that's what I'm talking about. Like, 
when you're trying to find a place and as, as a youth and you find this kind of music like this picture describes it all just like in the mosh pit and everything you know the good old days and uh yeah this is one of my very favorites so many good songs on here we got uh the title track do or die get up never alone caught in a jar road of the righteous far away coast and once again with the cool pressing of the vinyl it's got this little clear green look to it great pickup very happy doing this one then we have one that might be uh i don't know controversial people but uh modest mouse we were dead before the ship even uh sank because so, so many people are so iffy about modest mouse but i think they're great they're, they they could be a little weird sometimes a little, little little uh too alternative for people but incredible i was just listening to them uh earlier at work today i mean dashboard fired up florida parting of the sea missing the boat little motel which that is a very beautiful but sad song uh, look up the video on youtube and like i was saying uh about like the inside sleeves of a lot of these albums i'm not sure what that is but it looks cool love this album and then uh another sublime album I'm a huge Sublime fan. I love punk rock. I love reggae. They had a great way to mix it, blend it all together. And that is, this is their best album, in my opinion. 40 Ounce to Freedom. We got uh, Lou Dog on the back. We got Ben Dog up top and the Cat Tower. But yeah, this is this is great. It's got uh, 40 Ounce to Freedom, the title track, Smoke Two Joints, We're Only Gonna Die of Our Own Arrogance, uh, Bad Religion cover that they do great at. Don't Push, 5446, Bad Fished, DJs, Ebon. Yeah, this album is great. And then once again, look at all that. You got a nice picture of Brad in the band. Rest in peace, Brad. Now, I'm old enough to remember when you could buy CDs. In a, in like a big reason we got them when we were like young was because they had these uh, little little sleeves inside the, 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 the print of like the cover. And it had all this thanks and uh credits on who wrote the songs and produced what and that was always like a fun part of like buying new cds back in the day i know uh me and nick baker back in the day really like that stuff like that and once again it's a pretty cool record now it's a little hippie-ish for my style but this looks sick when it's rotating on the vinyl on, on the record player yeah sublime one of my all-time favorite bands Speaking of favorite albums, this is right behind the clash. You can't touch this. Michael Jackson Thriller. I really am not going to even explain much about this. I'll just show you Michael Jackson with a tiger. And that's going to have to do it. Michael Jackson's the king. I don't care what anybody says. Controversy or not, some of the best music I've ever heard in my life. Now we got a hip hop album that when it came out, this one really impacted me a lot. And uh, that's J. Cole. Forest Hills Drive. This one has a cool little sleeve in there with the car. Yeah, no features on this album or nothing. I When this came out, I played it nonstop. J. Cole is still one of the truest in hip-hop right now. I don't care what no one says. One of the best hip-hop artists around. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love this album. I could listen to it all day long. Then we have a, a punk band I really like. Uh, that's No Effects. So long and thanks for all the shoes. Now No Effects is like a weird punk band in the way of like, like say like Biggie vs Tupac. You can tell me what Biggie's best albums are. It's uh, Ready to Die and Life After Death because those are the only two he recorded when he was alive. Actually, Life After Death was released after he got killed. And so you could say what his best albums are, but when you look at like Tupac, he has such a big catalog of music, it's hard to really even say what the best album is, because it's all so spread out with the catalog that he has. And that's how I feel about this album with no effects, but it's got uh, all out of angst in here, Eat the Meek, uh, Murder of the Government, a lot of songs I really like. I'd have to spend a lot of bread to get all the no effects albums, maybe one day. And I feel like I got all these albums that have a lot of hate because uh, Southern Playlistic Cal uh, Cadillac Music, every time I show people this album, they're like, why don't you have a Aquaminium? Or, or they name all these other Outkast albums. I'm like, man, Outkast is a part of the reason the phrase uh, it's all good 
is still running because every Outcast album is amazing. I just prefer this one the most. I love that they have like all the producing credits on the back, but this is just a funky rap album. They were really young when they did this. Uh, yeah, Hootie Who, uh, Southern Play Less to Cadillac Music, Claim and True. Hootie Who is what you say to warn people when the police are uh, coming, by the way. Not that I would know anything about that. Adrian, look out. Love you, Adrian. One of my favorite uh, album artworks, Rancid and Out Come the Wolves. I love the black and white with the red contrast, the scratch on the bottom. This has so many good songs. Maxwell Murder, Time Bomb, Olympia, uh, Junkie Man, Ruby Soho, obviously. Journey to the End of the East Bay. I don't think she's automatic, though. But And like I said, uh, this literally has a full lyric page in here. It's all in chicken scratch and stuff. I think that's so cool. Is this a poster? I never knew I had a giant poster of one of my favorite albums in here. I'm gonna have to frame that. That's how you know you're getting old. When I was young, I would just hang it up, but then I ruined so many posters. I have a I just seen a Rocky poster downstairs I have that got ruined. I'm like, man, gotta frame this shit. That's how you know you get old. Frame that poster. Uh my favorite Misfits album, Static Age, which actually was completed in 1978, which should have been their debut album, but didn't get released in its entirety until 1996. This is with Glenn Danzig, when they were the best. I don't mind Michael Graves. Famous Monsters is okay. American Psycho is garbage, but like what you like, listen to what you want to listen to, but this is the best. It's got Return of the Fly, Static Age, TV Casualty, my favorite hybrid moments, Some Kind of Hate, Last Caress, and... It's amazing. Before they're even wearing the face paint. And a sad thing about loving like the Misfits is some of my favorite songs by them are only a minute and a half. But, you know, still good. Love this album. Then one of my favorite hip-hop albums we have, Nas Illmatic. I actually got this for $7 at a mall the same day. I almost bought a Komodo and Nick Baker talked me out of it. He said, why do you need a Komodo? I said, why the fuck don't I need a Komodo? But I didn't buy it. But I was, yeah, I was like almost insulted that they were selling this for $7. I was like, Illmatic is worth way more than that. But uh, they have like a 20-year anniversary one I wanted to get, but I never did. But yeah, this is one of my biggest influences in uh, rap music. New York State of Mind, Life's a Bitch, The World's Yours, which I actually did a cover of back in the day when I used to make music. Then we have an album, uh, any of the indie guys from Michigan might recognize the name Tony Thunder actually showed me. This artist, Jameson, he is from Michigan. And uh, this is like a throwback. This dude is R&B all the way. Great album. Love to get. Lo love that I grabbed this purchase. Amazing album. Then I got one here. This album actually got me through a lot of hard times when this came out. And uh, I love uh, Kendrick's first album, or or his mixtape or whatnot. I don't honestly care too much for a lot of his newer stuff, but Good Kid, Mad City. Like I put this against like almost any rap album like like i said i was kind of going through some shit when this came out so like bitch don't kill my vibe or uh good kid or uh sing about me those songs got me through it and once again you got some cool pictures with his family and everything this is a great album though and really cool stuff i think i'm gonna have to spin some records tonight now the final two. There's so many like Wu Tang albums I need. I don't even have the original Wu Tang Clan vinyl, and that that's a travesty. But I had to grab this one. Raekwon the Chef, only built for Cuban links. Him and Ghostface on the cover. Man, if you don't, in case you didn't know, the Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Uh, and this is Raekwon the Chef's debut album. Uh, one of my very favorites. He's got kind of more of that like criminology kind of swag in his lyrics. And uh, yeah, so many good songs. Striving for Perfection, Knowledge is God, Criminology, Rainy Days, Guillotines. And then uh, when I when I got this, I had to grab this one that actually came out. I wish I knew the year off the top of my head, but I was pretty young, like maybe 20 when this came out. And that is Only Built for Cuban Links Part 2, the sequel. Which actually, this has a pretty cool... vinyl too might be hard to see all purple 
the purple tape sometimes referred to but this one holds a special place in my heart because we always used to jam out to only built for cuban links part one uh but i remember me and my friend alex rugburn we got this album we bought it or the cd we sat there and listened to the whole thing we're just blown away especially by like uh cold outside with him and ghostface killer uh Asan Jones, which is a tribute to uh, Old Dirty Bastard, Russell Jones, who used to haunt my apartment back in 2012, by the way. He was tight. But, uh, yeah, I love this one. I love all these vinyls. It, it makes me kind of reminisce and make me wish I, I could get some more. I mean, I can once this virus is all over and everything. But, uh, yeah, those are just a handful of the records that I have. Like I said, I got a whole bunch of them. And I, I would love to see some other people get in on this challenge i'm looking at you todd gilbert you better hop on this vinyl challenge let me see some of those records man because this is bringing me back like like i i could ramble on more and more but like i i don't have much memory on my phone right now so like i, I don't want to go on too long and have the video get cut but like i could tell stories and stories about all these records and just the way certain songs affected me and everything and uh yeah music is great i love it uh if i could get any more new records i know i've wanted uh ghostface killer uh uh iron man i always wanted liquid swords by the jizz uh there's a whole bunch man i i could go on and on but i mean i hope you guys like this video like i said i just wasn't really in the mood to review a movie or talk about them i just figured this might be a little easier to go off the cuff and just bullshit about some music uh like i said in honor of my friend jeff klaus who passed away uh, a couple weeks ago Love you, brother. Rest in peace. Uh, once again, sucks I got to keep uh, saying stuff about this virus, but I hope everybody's doing okay out there. Hang in there, guys. We're going to get through this shit, and, and ho hopefully we're going to learn from our mistakes of how fucked up society has gotten based off all this, and maybe we're all going to just go a little harder in life and try to get what we want a little quicker because, you know, we're, we're on God's time now, and, and you never know. You never know how long you got, but... uh. Yeah, shout out to everybody watching the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if there's any horror movies in the future you want me to review. I still want to do the Intruder review. And I'm in the middle of watching uh, John Carpenter's The Thing again. So, I mean, I could always do that one. Uh, but other than that, hope you guys have a good one. Blood, guts, gore. Check you guys next time.